What is the smallest computer you can build with a Core i5 and a GTX 1060? Um, a Mini ITX maybe? But even with Mini ITX, the smallest you can go would probably be something like a N case or Dan case. The Dan case is only 7.2 liters, which is very impressive for what it's capable of. But what if I tell you I fit a Quadro P4000 video card in a computer that's just over 2.5 liters. Let's meet the Zotac EN1060K. It is only 2.6 liters with a dimension of 9 by 8 by 2.5 inch. It packs a 7th generation Intel processor all the way up to 7700T. It also has an MXM slot that will take a video card all the way up to GTX 1070. And as for RAM and storage, it has two DDR4 sodium slots and one M.2 slot that's going to take both SATA and NVMe SSDs up to 2280. And also have a SATA bracket here that's going to take both a 2.5 inch SSD or HDD. Uh, it's my friend's computer. I mean, he doesn't really need the upgrade, but he want to upgrade it just for fun. Uh, I just happened to have this Quadro P4000. So we decided to upgrade his video card. So uh, the Quadro P4000 is a video card NVIDIA released back in February 2017. It is based on a 16 nanometer Pascal GP104 GPU and has a similar spec to the GTX 1070. Um, yeah, it is a mobile version. So according to Tech Power Up, it has 1792 shader units, 112 TMUs, and 64 ROPs. While the 1060 Mobile has only 1280 shaders, 80 TMUs, and 48 ROPs. So uh, the Quadro P4000 also has 8 gigs of GDDR5 memories on a 256-bit bus, while the GTX 1060 only has 6 gigs on a 192-bit memory bus. So uh, before we get started, let's talk a little bit about laptop video card upgrades. So uh, most high-end laptops with a dedicated video card will use a slot called MXM or Mobile PCIe Express module. So according to Wikipedia, there are two major generations of MXM. Most of the laptops you see on the market today that has a socketed video card are using the second generation MXM. Um, but it's commonly referred to as MXM3 instead of 2. Um, there are two variations. So the uh, A variation is smaller and usually used for lower end video cards. And the B variant is more common in high end laptops such as um, Clevo, MSI, or Asus. You can plug in an MXM A card into a B slot, but not the other way around because it just won't fit in there. In this case, both our GTX 1060 mobile and the Quadro P4000 mobile are the B variant. However, um, there are way more factors when you're considering upgrading your video card in a laptop, such as uh, VBIO support, thermal designs, etc. Newer Dell or Alienware also use a different variation of the MXM with custom connectors and pinouts. Not to say um, some XM cards has additional onboard power connectors due to the limitation of motherboard power delivery. To make things even worse, most high-end thin and light gaming laptops nowadays actually use a soldered video card rather than the socketed version in order to uh, achieve its size and thermal design limitations. So uh, long story short, it is not recommended for a general consumer to upgrade a video card in a laptop or in a mini PC like this. Okay, enough said. Now uh, let's take it apart. So first let's remove the antenna and then let's remove the two screws in the back. Then now let's flip it around and the back panel should just slide off like this. Okay, so it now reviews the inside user serviceable part of this PC. Um, let's start by taking the parts out one by one. Okay, here goes our memory. And next let's take out the uh, M.2 SATA SSD. And then let's take out a screw for the uh, SSD bracket. So uh, there goes our SSD. And the next is the uh, M.2 wireless adapter. It has some tapes that tapes the antenna to the motherboard. Um, 
this is actually some fairly strong tape. So now we have the uh, wireless adapter out, and then it looks like we should take out the screws on the motherboard. And on the upper right corner, uh, you can see a Zotac warranty sticker that says a warranty void if seal broken. But um, you do need a better sticker, Zotac, because I was able to take out the sticker without damaging it. So if I ended up killing the computer during the upgrade, I can still send it back to Zotac for RMA. But just in the next second, um, I broke the sticker. Um, but I guess it doesn't matter because it's out of warranty anyways. Um, next, let's take out the IO plate. So just six screws that's holding it. And uh, as you can see here, actually got pretty good IO for the size. So it's got two USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.0, two display port, two HDMI, and uh, two one gig LAN ports. But the uh, motherboard is not coming out. So um, it looks like there's another screw underneath the uh, M.2 add-on board here. So uh, we need to remove that as well. And also let's disconnect the uh, connector for the front panel. And just to make sure we did not miss any screws, um, let's take the side panels out so that we can see through if there's anything uh, that's holding the motherboard. So it looks like the set panel still won't come out. Um, maybe we should take the fan out. Um, let's see if that helps. So here we take out the screws and then uh, take out the fan. That reveals the uh, socket or the uh, mount bracket for the CPU cooler. Um, okay, now the front panel came off. And uh, let me see. Okay, there's one more screw underneath the uh, M.2 adapter. Um, actually, there's two uh, different screws that's holding the adapter. So let's take it out, and that reveals the last screw. Okay, so uh, now we have our motherboard. The antenna actually goes through the motherboard in a couple holes. Uh, that's a common design on laptops. Okay, so uh, here we have the motherboard. It has two adhesives that looks a lot like what you will see on older laptops. So let's remove the two fans. And after taking out the fan, you will see the uh, screws for the actual heat sinks underneath. It looks like the CPU actually has a bigger heat sink than a video card. But um, I think the CPU is only 35 watts in TDP while our new card is uh, 150 watts. So uh, I'm a little concerned right now about the uh, heat dissipation. So uh, it's only two screws that's holding our um, MXM video card. Okay, here it goes. So here's a quick comparison between our video cards. Um, you can see they're exactly the same in size, they have the same socket, and the uh, Quadro P4000 actually has a bigger um, GPU because it's actually based on GP104, while the 1060 is based on GP106. Okay, now let's plug our new video card into the MXM slot. Uh, it's pretty simple, just like how would you do it on a desktop. And again, we uh, put the two screws back that holds the video card in place. But before we put everything back, uh, I'm gonna clean out all the thermal grease on it, and then I'm gonna apply new thermal grease on it. Okay, so now we have everything back in a socket with new uh, thermal grease on it. So let's put the heat sink back. Um, there's a couple tips with the screws here. First of all, do not over tighten your screw as that may actually kill the exposed GPU. Second of all, do not tighten one screws all the way. So instead, maybe you should do like a, a cross pattern or like a clockwise pattern so that you can make sure the heat sink has an even pressure on the CPU or GPU. Okay, so now let's follow the same steps as we take it apart to put it back. Um, that's uh, something I like about taking a video when taking something apart. Because um, when you forget about something, you can always look back into your video.
Okay, so we finally put it back together. Uh, it may look pretty easy in the video, but it actually took me uh, about one and a half hour to take it apart and then put it back. So uh, now let's run some benchmarks to see uh, if the upgrade is actually worth it. As you can see in the benchmarks, we're not getting that big of an improvement in gaming since the P4000 is running at a lower frequency than the GTX 1060. But um, my friend will be getting all the features that Quadro brings, although uh, I'm not sure if he ever needs that. But uh, for the money I paid, I think it's worth it because I can actually sell the GTX 1060 on eBay for more than what I paid for the P4000. And also, um, it's actually not a turnkey solution. Yes, the uh, computer boosts right away after I put in a new video card. However, um, Windows did not recognize the device, nor does the uh, NVIDIA driver installer. The driver installer says there's no compatible device because, uh, as we mentioned before, for a mini PC that uses MXM video cards like this, usually um, the vBIOS is integrated into the main BIOS of the actual computer and it only contains certain information like um, say for this one it only contains video cards that's made specifically for this model by Zotac so it does not recognize our NVIDIA Quadro P4000 so uh, in order to install the driver we need to uh, do some modifications to the driver and even after that you need to restart your system and disable driver software digital signature enforcement in order to install the driver we modified. Um, we're not going to talk into details in this video because we'll have another video coming up soon on the NVIDIA Tesla P10 uh, which is also based on the GP102 GPU. Um, I use the same PCB as the Quadro M6000 and the Titan XP. It has uh, 24 gigs of onboard RAM and has the same specs as the uh, Tesla P40. 
Nvidia never ended up releasing the Tesla P10. Um, so please subscribe if you don't want to miss that. Now, doing the driver installation, it's going to ask us if we want to install the driver anyway because it does not have a valid uh, digital signature. Um, since we actually modified the driver, so uh, and we know it's from a reliable source, so we're going to hit install anyways right here. And then uh, the driver should install without any issue. And after the driver is installed, we can go into device manager and it should show up as the Quadro P4000 right here. So um, this is it for today's video card upgrade. Again, I do not recommend general consumer to do that at home unless you really know what you're doing and you don't mind voiding your warranty and potentially causing permanent damage to a new high-end gaming laptop. As usual, if you like the video, please hit the like button. If you don't like the video, please comment below to let us know how we could make this better. You can support us by clicking on the links in the video description below. We'll get a small commission from Amazon to recoup some of our costs. Thanks for watching.